Okay, last night my students, they worked on this uh, shape, trying to figure out the area of the entire shape, and of all of the items that they had to do, they complained about this one the most, saying it was the hardest one to do. What we are going to be doing here is breaking this complex shape, also known as a composite figure. We're going to decompose it down into basic polygons, and then we'll find the area of each individual polygon that makes up this shape, then we will add the areas together to find the total area of this complex shape. Now, we do have some measurements given to us. For instance, from here to here, we know that this line segment is 65, this side is 65 centimeters. This side here is 28 centimeters, and this side is congruent, it's 28 centimeters also. This side is 40 centimeters, and this side's 40 centimeters, and here we have a side that's 24 centimeters. We also have a dotted line that goes this way that is 90 centimeters, and then we have a perpendicular line that goes from here to here that is 48 centimeters. Some of the uh, data here could be extraneous, things that we don't need to compute in our formulas for finding area, but a lot of it is. Now, the first thing that I would do is decompose it and make it into various shapes. And I'm going to go ahead and switch to my uh, line, set line tool here. So I'm going to go ahead and I think that it would be a very not good job to make that an isosceles triangle here. I think that it would also be worthwhile to make this an upside down isosceles uh, triangle here, and then I'm going to have a uh, rectangle here. So I decided that the approach I would take is break this shape down into three manageable polygons. In this case, two isosceles triangles and one rectangle. Now let's get back to formulas and that sort of thing. So the formula for finding a, the area of a rectangle, and I'm going to do this one in red, is area equals base times height. Now that's, that's pretty thick. I'm going to go ahead and make the, my line make it a little bit smaller so it's easier to, to use. Okay. So area equals base times height here. Now, when I look at this rectangle, I'm going to say that this side here is 65 centimeters. And I'm going to say that the height here is 24 centimeters. So all I have to do is multiply 65 and 24, and it will tell me the area of the rectangle. Now, I have students in the classroom that are watching this. Students, I want you to get your calculators out, and I want you to figure out the product of 65 and 24. All right, Lanny, what would you get? 1,560. All right, 1,560, and that's going to be centimeters squared. So we'll say that the area of this rectangle is 1,560 centimeters squared. Now, boys and girls, more than one person uh, computed that, I'm sure. Does anybody disagree with what Lanny told us? So everybody agrees that we're in agreement that it's 1,560? Okay, here's another question for you. Those of you who did this problem and tried to work it out on your own last night, how many of you broke it into two isosceles triangles like I did and one rectangle? Okay, so I've got some hands that are up. So I must be on the right track. Now let's go ahead and figure out the area of this triangle here. So I'm going to go ahead and say you area you equals one half times base times height. And the reason we use that formula is because a triangle is actually half of a rectangle. I could actually do a little bit of work here, uh, cut a few pieces off, and I could actually make a, a rectangle with two of these triangles. So I'm going to use the same formula for a rectangle. The only thing is I'm going to only use half of it. Now let's look at our height. Well, we, our base. We'll look at our base. From here to here is what we're going to consider for our base. 
or I consider I can do from here to here. Now, um, if I did this side and considered it the base, I'd run into trouble because I wouldn't have any indication of the height. I wouldn't be able to do that. So I'm going to consider this the base because this line here, this dotted line here, is going to help me figure out the height. So from here to here, I happen to know is congruent with from here to here. When I made my line from here to here, I didn't have to make it diagonally or broken or anything like that. Uh, it, so this line and this line are congruent. So if this is 24 centimeters, then this base here is going to be 24 centimeters. And I'm going to go ahead and do it like this. Now the height from here to here, I can figure it out. If this distance from here to here is 90 centimeters, and from here to here is 65 centimeters, I can figure the height by subtracting 65 from 90. And what is 90 subtract 65? All right, Gracie. 35. 35? I don't think so. Wait, 90 minus 65? Mm-hmm. Oh, 20. Yes, 25, 25. Now, one of the things I did when she said that, and this might help you kids, because I know we, we sometimes have items like this, where it doesn't make sense to you. I have 65 and 90. I know that it was 60, the difference between 90 and 60 is 30. So when I heard somebody say 35, I knew that couldn't be right, because I knew it had to be less than 30. So I know it was 25. Now, all I have to do is go ahead and compute it out, solve it out. And I can do this a couple ways. I could use the distributed property of um, multiplication, and I could just say half of 24 and 25, or I could just go ahead and find the product of 24 and 25 and then multiply that by half. And I think that's what I'll do. All right, so 24 times 25, what is it, boys and girls? All right, 600, I hear. And half of 600, Half of 600, half times 600 is 300. So 300 and our unit measure is centimeters square. Now those of you who broke it down as rectangle and two isosceles triangles, how many of you were getting the same values I'm getting? Okay, then I must be on the right track. I'm seeing some hands going up. Now let's figure out the area of this great big triangle here. I say big just relative to the smaller one. All right, let's use a different color ink. This time we'll use black ink. <clears throat> Same formula, area equals one-half base times height. Area equals one-half. Now, the base, I'm going to use this side here as my base. The reason I'm doing that is because we've got this line here that's going to help us figure out the height. If I tried to use this side or this side for the base, I'd run into problems trying to figure out the height. So I know that the base is 48 centimeters. And this is supposed to be a parentheses. Now the height. If this line segment here, this line dotted line here is 48 centimeters from this point to this point. If this is 48 centimeters and I know that from here to here is 24 centimeters, I can determine that from here to here is 24 centimeters. So all I have to do is multiply 48 and 24 and then find out what half of that is. So what is 48 times 24? All right, Johnny. Say it again, please. Does everybody agree with that? 1152, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, half of 1152, or 1152, what is that, boys and girls? All right, Gracie, do you have a question? I have a question. Wouldn't the base be 65 since those lines are congruent? Wouldn't the base be 65? Gracie, I'm so glad you were here watching. It is. I saw that 48 sitting there, and I thought it went with the line segment that I had drawn. When really, I need to look at this line segment here, which is 65, centimeters. So this one here is 65 centimeters. All right, it's really always great to have an extra set of eyes watching this sort of thing. I'm glad Gracie caught that for me. So that's going to change that value and it's going to change this one as well. All right, so I'm going to go back and put 65 times 24. And what is 65 times 24, Gracie? 1,560. Like that? All right, and what's half of 1,560? 780. 780 centimeters squared. 
All right, so I made a simple mistake. It's always good to have another set of eyes watching. I just, for some reason, saw this 48 and thought it went along with this line segment here. But like Gracie said, uh, I need to focus on this line segment and its measurement. And then because this is a rectangle, opposite sides are congruent. So this should have been 65 all along. In the future, I think what I'll do is, after I do a line segment, I think I'll try to very quickly label the value for it. I think that's what I'll do. So I learned something from one of my students today, which is pretty neat. All right, now all I have to do, and I'm going to use a little purple color here, I am just have to add up this area here for the area of the rectangle, this area here for the area of this isosceles triangle, and this area here for the area of this isosceles triangle. And that is a little exponent too. So what is... What is the answer when we add all those areas together? All right, I'm going to sling this one at Bradley. 2,640. And our unit measure is? Centimeter squared. Okay, and that's area for the total shape is 2,640 centimeters squared. Those of you who worked this out already, how many of you wound up with the exact same answer that we did as a class? Okay, that's great. So while some kids did struggle with it, I had some other kids who persevered through it and finished it up and got the right answer. So, very, very good. Math practice that I would use to go along with this is I simply use what I know about formulas uh, for finding the area of rectangle and isosceles triangles. Well, actually, that formula would go along with any triangle. All right, I hope that this uh, demonstration has been a help to my students. How many of you feel a little bit more confident about doing this type of problem now? All right, I'm seeing lots of hands. Good job. How many of you think it's kind of neat the way the teacher made the mistake and the student had to correct it? Yeah, and Grace is really raising her hand on that one. All right, good, good show.